In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. When our Old Testament forefathers and foremothers went to church, their experience was quite a bit different from ours. The Day of Atonement recounted in our first reading is just one powerful example of this. When our Old Testament forefathers and foremothers went to church on the Day of Atonement, this is what they witnessed. They saw the slaughter of innocent animals. They heard their dying cries, and then there was the blood. Lots and lots of blood, buckets of blood, blood on the hands and vestments of the priests, blood sprinkled on the mercy seat in God's presence, blood smeared on the horns of the altar. When you went to church in the Old Testament, there was no escaping the terrifying truth of your sin. Those animals were dying. They were shedding their blood to atone for your sins. It was a bloody mess. And then there was the scapegoat. On the Day of Atonement, one goat was sacrificed to atone for sin. But a second goat was taken by the priest. And standing at the entrance of the tent of meeting where all the people could see him, he laid his hand on the head of the goat. And he confessed over the goat the sins of the nation. And then the goat was taken into the wilderness and left there. The scapegoat revealed what they deserved because of their sin. But also the mercy of God in providing a substitute. Because of their sins, the people deserved to be cast away, exiled from God's presence, literally sent to hell. That's what they deserved. But instead, their sins were placed on that goat. The innocent goat bore their sin in their place, carrying it into the wilderness away from the presence of God. God wanted His people to see this. He wanted them to witness the sacrifice, to see the blood, to hear the cries of the dying animals. And He wanted them to see the scapegoat bearing their sins, being led away into the wilderness. He was teaching them about the severity of their sins and what they deserved because of them. But even more, He was teaching them, preparing them, creating within them a longing for the final sacrifice to come. The death of His own Son to save them. There are some today who are upset by the image of a crucified Jesus Christ in the church. They don't want to see the suffering, bleeding, and dying of their Savior depicted for them every Sunday. It makes them uncomfortable. They want church to be all sunshine and roses and happy feelings. Well, tell that to the Old Testament saints. We don't gather in Jesus' name in order to feel good. We gather like the people in the Old Testament to be forgiven and our forgiveness was accomplished by sacrifice. The sacrifice of Jesus Christ by His blood shed for us on Calvary. The sacrifice, the blood, the only innocent One taking the place of the guilty. He is the center of our worship just as it was for the saints in the Old Testament. And so the image of Jesus on the cross becomes simultaneously the most horrific and most wonderful thing that we could ever behold. Horrific. Because we deserve that cross. Wonderful. 
because he took our place there. John was the first to announce this reality after Jesus had our sins washed on him at his baptism and before the Holy Spirit led him into the wilderness of temptation. John had this to say about Jesus. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Those words recall the whole Old Testament sacrificial system. Not just the Day of Atonement, but all the sacrifices. The death of millions upon millions upon millions of spotless lambs and other animals. Hundreds of thousands of gallons of blood shed all so that the people's sins might be taken away. It would have been a never-ending cycle of sin and sacrifice and forgiveness. But Jesus is God's Lamb. The Lamb. The once for all sacrifice who bears the sins not just of Israel, but of the whole world. That was His purpose. That was His goal. Jesus came as a sacrificial offering to God. He came as the sin-bearer to take upon Himself our sins and to take them away by His sacrifice. That's good news. That's Gospel. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And those all-important words, sins of the world, those words include you. He came for you as your substitute, the innocent for the guilty. He came to take away your sins. No more sacrifices needed. No more scapegoats. Nothing left to be done. No work for you to do to make atonement. Nothing. Good Friday is the true day of atonement. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. In Him, everything changes. The Old Testament sacrificial system is obsolete. But the presence of the one true Lamb of God. The temple sacrifices are over. Overshadowed fulfilled by the sacrifice of Christ. Your sins are forgiven once and for all and because He is risen, because He is seated at the right hand of God with all power and authority, He freely gives that forgiveness to you in His Word of promise, in His holy absolution, in His baptism, and in His holy supper. John cries to us across the centuries, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And we do behold Him in the means of grace and are forgiven. In the name of Jesus.